CCC cap at uh, 24. I was just trying to pretend I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the YouTube stream and you know, that's what it was delayed. So. <laughs> Yeah, the YouTube YouTube streams a, a couple of seconds behind. I think your mic's a little bit quiet, Dalton. Again, I don't know. I've got you. Uh, I've got you cranked up. Yeah, but that should be better. Um, yeah. So yeah, I thought we'd uh, recap uh, the recent test down at Sebring. Finally got back in the car, didn't we? And uh, had a good couple of days. Fortunately, you had uh, what your rookie day. You're still classed as a rookie. Uh, you did, you've done under the 12, 12 races, right? So you get an extra day's testing that we threw in back-to-back uh, -back down at Sebring. So, uh, yeah, we can go through that, yeah, that can we? Yeah, that may come as a surprise to some that I'm, 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 I'm still a rookie, but I think you have to do 12 races or something, um, or nine races. Yeah, I think, I think yeah, so, yeah. Which, which we didn't do. I, mean, I don't think we, I don't think we I didn't do any of the seven last year. So, um, yeah, that's... Uh, it's, it's a benefit because you do actually get an extra set of tires for race weekend, uh, which you, you have to give them back at, at the end of practice. So it's not like you can't kind of keep them for the race to have an extra set of primaries <laughs> or whatever. Um, but it's still a, an added advantage when you know, you're still trying to learn, learn the tire and get up to speed quickly. So and you get the extra test set. So we did two days back to back at Seabrook, and um, no, it was it was really good to have that kind of strong start to the off season and really get back in the car and get up to speed. Yeah, a lot of, it's very limited, right, with the uh, the amount of time that anybody gets in the car during the year to try and keep costs down. Um, like we said, you get the you get the extra day, but you still only get four days. Like Sebastian's only going to have three days. He did one day. Um uh, on the on the first of the two days with you and you were just by yourself on that second day, right? And then we're going to have a day uh, in uh, in Barber before the first uh, before the first race, which is good. We thought we were going to be at Laguna, but we switched it to Barber. Um, then like Texas, it's, I mean, it's just, it, it, and then you're into racing, right? It, it, it's difficult, and we'll talk to. We've got a, a nice guest coming on here in a little while. Your your race engineer, Mike Palowski. He'll, He'll explain uh, some of the difficulties and pros and cons of it all, right? That's, yeah, your mic's still a little, a little, a little echoey. We can hear you pretty that good. That should be it's better. I, I, I changed it to the this guy. It was it was used in the webcam. Yeah, no, that's my bad. It's always a little a little something, but we're we're a lot better this week than we were <laughs> last week. I mean, to be fair, last week we, we hadn't done one of these in like two months, probably. So you know, we kind of taken the Christmas break and. Want to start strong with Hinch, but we <laughs> between Hinch's problems <laughs> with you know the internet in the first day, and then then us having audio issues second day it was was a bit of a bit of a jumble. But well, at least we can hear each other, and our pictures are the right size, um, and every everything's going not too yeah. bad. So, but no, and you know I I thought the test went pretty well, right, Darren? I think it was it was it was a good start. Um, you know, pace wise, the first day was kind of right there with Seb. He was he ended up four tenths quicker I think on day one and day two we were kind of within striking distance of the the fast guys the we were, we were the only Honda no, no, I'm sorry the it was mostly Hondas there on the second day we were the only yep. Chevy aside from Carlin um we, you know they had the 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 Andretti army was there uh, with all yeah. their guys and they were they were they, 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 they were they were pretty quick yeah and Ganassi's on the Ganassi's on the first day is there you know, horde of four cars again now with uh, with the addition of Jimmy Johnson. Um, but yeah, no, it, it's, so it's always tough, isn't it, right? Because there are certain tracks that kind of suit the the Chevy package engine wise, and there are tracks that seem to seem, seem to suit the the Honda package. And mm -hmm. you know, we're always trying to get, get better. We think there's some going to be some uh, improvements from Chevy during the year, right? Um, but I'm sure Honda are do, doing the, doing the same. But you can always you can only really judge yourself against Chevy Chevy runners. And yeah. for you, I think the best thing that you're going to have this year, as you see in the background there, that you're in the number four car this year in the 14 is is Sebastian. And like you said, you were only a few tenths off him on the on the first day, and you found a, a bit of time on the second day, right? So you only got within a couple of tenths of his times. And good data, good feedback, um, yeah. very similar driving style as well which is nice right yeah we can we can definitely dive more into that with mike and talk about you know, how how you're actually using both 
both drivers and both sets of feedback to kind of push the whole thing forward. Um, so yeah. the comments. Hi, Elaine. Thanks for, thanks for tuning in. Um, yeah, this is new this year. We're doing the YouTube thing, not Twitch anymore. So let us know on the live stream on, in the comments and, uh, <laughs> Let us know what 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 you think of this platform. Honestly, we it, it, you know the feedback would, would be useful just just to know if, if this is a smoother experience than Twitch. I, I know some people in Canada were having a hard time kind of getting either the Twitch app on their phone or getting their, their the I think you have to create an you, account. You, you, can, you can get YouTube anywhere. Yeah, supposedly. YouTube's easy. I, Everyone has it. <laughs> um, so yeah, let us know and. Uh, then we'll be doing these every couple weeks in the off season, and then more regularly during during the season. So get the you know, whatever the notification button thing is, click that, and it'll it'll, it'll tell you when when the video go, goes live. Um, yeah. So without any further ado, let's bring in Mike. So Mike Pulowski is the engineer on the lead engineer on the on on the four car. And where is the little button? Let me bring him in. Where do I? There we go. Hi, Mike. How you guys doing? Hey, Phil, how's it going? Thanks it's for, going thanks for well. coming on. Appreciate it. Thank you. Glad to be here. Yeah. So, Mike, uh, you're the lead engineer on, on the four car. So, uh, I guess briefly just kind of give a high level synopsis of kind of what that what that job is. Sure. Yeah. I mean, my job basically is to make the car driver combination faster and um I do that through using various tools, but um, mostly it's it comes down to the driver's uh, motivation and uh, engine and setup of the car. So we spend a lot of time working on and testing the engine driver chassis combination. And um, yeah, it's a great job because you get instant feedback, and that's what I like about it. I've been in um, IndyCar for about 23 years now, and, yeah, I was, and I was, I've... I was going to ask you to tell everybody a bit about your background as well eventually, yeah. Yeah, and um, I started out uh, out of school and went to a regular job out on the West Coast and then didn't like it because there was way too many people and too many engineers, <laughs> and... Um, I decided I wanted to go racing, and I started in on uh, uh, IndyCar team as a as a DAG and a shock builder, and I've worked my way up uh, through the three general positions, which is the 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 DAG, the race assistant, and the race engineer. So it's it's been a good. It's been a good ride, so hey, hey, I, I really got, like it. I've got to stop you there quickly because uh, you hear that all the time, DAG, right? Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, uh, no, 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 no. For people that don't know, is, 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 is now let me see if I got this right. Is he data acquisition guy? Correct. Or, or, oh, or geek. It's not, it's not too much difference. You know, difficult is, it, is it data acquisition yeah. geek? <laughs> geek, yeah. there you go, even, uh, even it, better. It depends on your it depends on your perspective, yeah. I think. But um, <laughs> it's it's usually referred to as the guy because that guy is what determines whether we run or not, and oh, um, yeah, it's yeah. it's an important position. the um, The race team is a funny business because we only have one position per. Like there's not a lot of backup, so if you make mistakes and fail, everybody knows about it right yeah. away. And there's not a lot so, of time. It's you know, it's it, the like refresh rate of the whole process is very fast, right? You get like and like, like like you said, that's kind of good or bad. You get the instant feedback on your good decisions and bad decisions, right? Or or mistakes. Yeah, exactly. You get to know it's it's a funny business, but it's it's a great business because. You get to know how your work is, and you see the you see the results instantly. Yeah. So where um, where did you go to school? I, I I don't think you mentioned that in here. Yeah, I um, went to school at the University of Illinois in Champaign Urbana, and um, a mechanical engineering degree. Uh, then I spent six years in industry working for the Boeing company, um, and. After that, I I started to work at uh, uh, an old IndyCar team that Darren remembers, but not a lot of other people remember, uh, Derek Walker Racing. Yeah. 
So that's that's where I got my feet wet, and um, yeah. Yeah. When were you when were you at Walkers? It was 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 it after when I was there? I was there in two thousand and three for the one year. Were you after me? Yeah, I was before you and after you. I've oh, actually been, okay. Yeah, I, I actually worked there uh, two different occasions. So it was uh, it's one of those things. There's only so many people that do the job and yeah. their racing is a small fraternity, I guess, if you will. Mm-hmm. And you, you see a lot of the same faces change shirts year <laughs> after yeah. year. No, it's a shame Derek's not, not going anymore. And, uh, he sold his shop uh, and everything. And, uh, I have fond, fond memories of that. And some of my best friends were, I met at, uh, at that, in that first year when I came to America in 2003 at, at Walker's, Walker's shop. And he had some good programs back in the day with Toyota and the yeah. coming deal and uh, uh, some good drivers through his stable. It's a shame, shame, shame that the, 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 the money involved in motor racing uh, probably um, made him shut up shop. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's, a, but, that's, uh, business, that's a big, a big part of it. Um, so kind of switching gears a bit, the, uh, Daytona 24 is this weekend. Have you ever done it? Have you ever ventured over onto the endurance side or strictly IndyCar? I ha- I have. Uh, I spent 2009, I believe it was, working uh, a prototype car. Uh, I didn't. I did the 12 hour of Sebring race. I didn't do uh, any of the Daytona races because of the way the schedule landed that year. Mm-hmm. But um, I worked on the Porsche prototype, um, the Spider, and that was a that was an excellent program and um, a really fun car to work on. Yeah, so, that, was, that was a pretty car, an expensive car. But yeah, a pretty one. <laughs> yeah, it was. And the support that Porsche gave you was uh, better than none, I think. I, I I liked those cars, right? Because I, you can tell me better. You know, because I was just driving the things. The same with Dalton. You drove a few P2s, which is kind of like that Porsche. Yeah. And they're still driving. Now PR1 are, are doing Daytona yeah. this weekend, right? Uh, but, this weekend. Uh, it, yeah, but back in the back back when that Porsche was out, the, 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 the regulations were pretty open, right? When yes. You can, you can go build your own car and, like, design it from scratch if you wanted. And people like Porsche did, so they had all these intricate shocks and beautiful cars if you could design from scratch right rather than buying a customer car yeah yeah exactly and that that was that was part of the interest for me yeah once you got the vehicle that had all these bells and whistles on it you could play with it it with little rule infractions and you could basically do whatever you wanted to try to make the thing go better and um that was that was a good year yeah, you, you you like driving the – you've driven a P3, right, Don? Yep. We did quite a lot of testing during the Indy Lights yeah, with the P3, P3 similar kind of downforce. But the, the P1, you did some races, some long races, didn't you, as Yeah, well? Well, the P2 car, yeah. The, uh, P2 yeah. car, sorry. No, yeah. it, was, it, was, it, it, it was cool. I got, got a chance to race at Mosport, my home track, uh, Laguna Seca, the week before the, the Lights race, and then finished off with um, – uh, T. Le Mans at, at VIR or not not VIR sorry uh, Road Atlanta which Road is Atlanta. that's such a I cool get, track get, I mean, that is that that's a fun one I think it, like it, it it almost seemed like a longer sort of most sport because it's got lots of elevation change and you know kind of a narrow older yeah. style track not a ton of runoff pretty unforgiving um, we ended up having uh, having a mechanical about a third of the way through the race or so during my second stint yeah I remember, but, shame on it. oh it was. You guys were doing well, and you were yeah. fast and, and everything. I, th- I thought that was, you know, the reason we did, did that was to get some good experience. And all that. Um, again, driving was limiting, right? Yeah, yeah. With the with the testing regulations being relatively limited in in Indy Lights, and more so probably in IndyCar, you gotta take any any, any track time you can. And uh, no, and speaking of which, you know, like I said, we were at Sebring last week, and I don't know, Michael, what 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 was your overall overall impression? What do you what would you think of getting things rolling last last week at Sebring. Well, well, I thought it was a very good test for our first test together. Um, uh, truthfully, when I go out testing, um, it's it can be a challenge with a new driver because you have to relearn the language. Um, and the language of driving 
it, it's different for different drivers. And um, I thought it went really well. And I, I focus a little bit on the relationship between you and I, but I thought we worked really well together and I understood what you meant a lot of the yeah. time. So, uh, and, and, and that was one part of it. But the other part was that we we accomplished our goals of our test plan. I mean, we, we spend a lot of time coming up with the test plan for the two cars and then we go and we execute it. But any one thing can, can throw a monkey wrench into that yep. works. So mm -hmm. we, we had a good test. We spent a lot of time on track. We used up our tires and I thought we used them up yeah, well. Yeah, we did a lot of laps. I think it was what, 270 something over, over the two days, which is quite a few laps at a road, yeah, at a road exactly. course. I uh, got to give a shout out to the Pit Pit guys because I, I, I felt pretty fresh after that. And we even went and hit the simulator on, on Friday. So that was a, that was a busy week. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, it was. Left yeah, hand had, had a little blister, but that was kind of it, really. Definitely yeah. earned your money driver that week. That was for sure, buddy. <laughs> Better than sitting at home during yeah. COVID, right, that yep. we've been doing normally. So, uh, you can only no, do I so much I, eye racing. <laughs> yeah, better than, better than eye racing. But I think, like you say, you, you brought up some good points there, Mike, with the, with the testing. And, and for people that don't know what, what kind of goes on, I think that, you know, you, there is always – and this is the thing that I've always felt with the limited amount of track time gets hurt the most. The stat, the, the list of things that you want to do, right? Yeah, you've got exactly. Like, hey, okay, I want to try this cooling vent. I want to try this. I want to do this. And you've always nearly got to eight, you know, back to back to back it. And you run out of tires or, or testing ta or time in the days. Yeah. And, and you've, we, fortunately, we had two days and we got two drivers and we got through a lot of stuff. But there was a lot of let's say non-performance stuff at the time it's not just about going fast i think yeah. is what i'm saying like all the time at a test is it yeah you have, you have stuff yeah, you want exactly. to learn specifically yes yeah. exactly yeah yeah there's there's a lot of items that you just need to check off the list so that later in a race weekend when you have much less time <laughs> and tires yeah you yeah. know what it's going to do. And so you can confidently put that on or off the car without yeah. worry. Yeah. So for me, it's, it's like vital to get that testing list done. And the four days that we have is enough, but I could always come up with more things to do. So it's, it's a give and take. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And you, know, you spoke earlier about the kind of the, the language that the drivers use and how we, you know, how the, 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 the rapport between you and I, but there's also the driver to driver within the engineering room and not only that, but also the two teams working together. And we've got a couple of new people on the team uh, with Justin heading up the uh, 14 car with Daniele and, and Seb coming on board. Obviously that, that's, that's a huge change, right? And it's, um, I, th right. I, I thought everyone worked really well together and the, the point you made, you know, like you understanding me and it's like the, you also, you know, you're also looking at teammate to teammate, right? Because it's like what, and Seb's maybe more uh, vocal about something you know, like his, his two out of five or his four out of five might be my two out of five kind of thing. Right. And yeah, exactly. So it's kind of you know, yeah. learning that, that different drivers. To, that's something that you're learning, right? Yeah. Walton, I think, and I think that's, yeah, like you say, it's not just Mike learning you or the other engineers learning you. It's you learning Mike and it's you learning Sebastian. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and, and yeah, like, okay, that's that. Okay. I was only a two out of five, but Sebastian was a, a five out of five. I need to be maybe more vocal because I did actually, I think yeah. hopefully you're going to learn a lot this year in a short space of time. Yeah, I think having Seb on board has, has been great and is going to be a you know, great learning opportunity for me and a great development opportunity and performance opportunity for the team. So I think it's, I think it's a good, a good, good change overall. So I think, yeah, it's going to be going to be exciting. Um, yeah, Sebring is kind of a particular, well, not 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 just Sebring, but one one of the one of the things you fight at Sebring, I guess, is kind of keeping the rear tires under you, right? And like as the test goes on and as you're, you're going through that test plan right one of the things that we're always talking about is you know where, where are we on tires and as the and i'm just kind of going through this to explain and hopefully kind of give people some context as to how we sort of do the test day right it's like if you have these items that you want to change and 
you do it, you know, you make a certain change and you, and the driver gets a read on a new set of tires versus a stint old set, set, set of tires, you're kind of, your, your signal to the noise ratio gets worse as the, as the tires degrade yeah. because at, at some point it's, you know, the driver's more, more or less reading the tire degradation than the actual change that you've made. Right. Which makes testing Correct. kind of difficult. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it, it makes it very difficult. So we, we spend a lot of time on big changes doing what we call an ABA or uh, the test, the starting configuration, then the, the change, then back to the starting configuration. So to have a good read on the change with the tire degradation because you can't get rid of it. It's, it's just one of those things that happens. And if it's not tire degradation, it's, it's fuel load or it's something else, you know, track conditions is another track big... conditions. Yeah. Exactly. See, C- see brings a big one for that, right? With sand, <laughs> with yeah. down Florida, uh, you know, rubbering in, it's a very abrasive track that t- obviously, it was 50 degrees in the morning. It yeah. was still winter in Florida, but it was 80 degrees at, at, at lunchtime, right? So a right. lot of a lot of factors that that, <laughs> that you guys have to figure out. Right. Yeah. And and the way we do that is just by doing it over and over and over again. And and that may seem uh, redundant, but it's with the changing conditions. It's the only way you get a read on things. Yeah. So I, I don't think I've ever asked this, but like from an, from an engineer's perspective, because you, you always hear people ask this to the drivers, right? But as an engineer, what's your what's your favorite track? Oh, Laguna Seca, for sure. Yeah, um, I, I love Laguna because of the elevation change and the, the, the high speed corners. Um, that to me over the years has been one that's perpetually hit my top list okay. so no 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 worldwide ones did you do did you do any racing in the rest of the world mike did you go yes abroad? yes i did i've been to um england and uh Come Belgium. On, there's gotta be some good tracks in england God, oh for sure, an American for sure. Off, <laughs> yeah well i i'm partial because i spent my time here here so uh yeah. yes um, i went to <laughs> yeah, Silverstone was an excellent track, um, but I still prefer uh, a, a place like Laguna. And it's not only just like the fans were incredible in Europe, mm. and the fans in Canada are incredible. Um, they, <laughs> they 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 pump up everybody, and it's a it's a good feeling. But I, I don't know, I still like Laguna. Yeah. So I, what? I'm, so what I'm, is it with yeah, the? I, oh, sorry. Go, go ahead, Darren. No, I was gonna say Silverstone's great. It's got a. It's you know half the. It's got some of the fastest sections of corners in the world for half the track and pretty technical the rest. But you, you're right. It is still. It's a, still an airfield from the war. Right. <laughs> and it's right. flat as a pancake. You know, it's not Spa. Spa's another good. Uh, you know, would be a Laguna. You know, European version I, of Laguna, yeah, twice long. You know, but yeah, I think Sebring is kind of yeah, unique. I'm with you for for that because it, it's Sorry. like Sebring's super flat, right? Like there's probably there's minimal elevation. You know, there's a little a little like three Correct. inch hump as you're coming out of the uh, out, of, out of the hairpin and all that. But like across the lap, it, it's very flat. But there's so much character there, like especially the full course that like you kind of forget that it's a flat track. Whereas some flat tracks like a nola if 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 you ever went there it's like you you definitely you're aware it's a very flat kind of go-kart feeling track but sebring just has so much kind of character i, I always feel like so going back to laguna though what so what is it with the you know, the combination of the the elevation and the high speed corners like from an engineering standpoint what are you actually doing to, to the car that's like more interesting or kind of you know different there well, that you might not do somewhere else without giving away secrets a, of course yeah for <laughs> For a high-speed track or track with high-speed corners, you have to set the car up a little differently. Like, you need to put in a build-in, a little understeer for it, and you can't you can't run on the knife edge of oversteer because you're going to crash. And um, so getting closer to that edge is 
appealing to me. And um, again, it's it's something that has to work with the driver because he's part of the equation. But you get into it and you start building speed there. Like when you go and you run out and you go out and warm your tires and you get going, and all of a sudden you're like six seconds quicker at the end of the end of the day. So that's that's I think what appeals to me about it. It is a cool place. I mean, from a driver driving perspective it's very much like a bit of a roller coaster you know darren you're coming down the corkscrew there and then i, I always feel like because everyone makes a big deal about the corkscrew you know it's like it's, big, it's very dramatic but it, but it's really turn nine afterwards that's the hard one because it off camber right. down a hill yeah, yeah compression to then another kind of yeah. off camber Te- technically it's the, way the harder corkscrew is so, so yeah. slow isn't it? the corkscrew is so slow it's like for yeah. a driver it's just you're dead stopped and you just like go off a cliff. It's pretty cool. The like the you you you, you don't see the second yeah. apex. You've got to like Point guess tree where it less. is. And I I, I like that type of. Bl- I always love street circuits. Uh, Macau, the Formula Three street circuit over in Hong Kong is is one of my favorite tracks. But like even Monaco and places like that, and Saint Petersburg, I love I love those tracks because there's so much commitment for a driver that you yeah. don't know. You can't see where you're going. Uh, right. There's there's something about that that uh, that that Laguna's got, like you say, Dol. Right. You got you come out of the corkscrew and then you've got a just flat out left afterwards. It's some high character. commitment stuff. But you can't see where you're going. No. All right. Right. Yeah. Uh, a driver that I used to work with used to call them big scary corners, <laughs> and that's that was put it in perfect. Um, perspective yeah so, layman's terms it, that, yeah that's what it is you got to be pretty yeah. brave right yeah exactly yeah you got to totally commit <laughs> high very high commitment um something i actually hadn't really thought of beforehand but i, I was just thinking back now to what you know, we, we, we we were chatting about this while we were either when we were on the way to the sim or last week at uh laguna but i would one it, with both of you here with an engineering perspective and darren from a driving perspective they they just announced the the Indy Autonomous Challenge, right? That they're they're going to be doing a demo in May. So they, it's basically a program. If you haven't heard, with it, they they have I think 20 entries with their Indy Lights chassis, with a kind of lidar sensor suite where the driver would would be sitting, and the the, the challenge you know, is basically and it's supposed to be a collegiate design or research project challenge where they have to do a 25 lap race and the first person to win. I think it's speed limit of 120 miles an hour or something around the Indy Oval. So, I guess so let's start with Mike. What what are you, you know, what are your thoughts, kind of kind of perspective on that? Well, I I mean, uh, it's mixed bag, truthfully, because although I know deep down that that is the future of racing, I still enjoy the human element in it, and I find out that that's a large part of my um, satisfaction with my job is getting that human interaction and getting the most out of the driver and going into things that he didn't think he could do and doing them. Um, So it's a mixed bag. Like I know everybody, like my son says, oh, that's the future, driving cars. And I'm like, yeah, but it's still, you want to have some sort of control yourself and um, there's there's an element to it that I think it's going to be for a long time where you've got going down a mindless highway at 65 miles an hour, it's going to be drive on your own. But getting into town or going around on Highway 101 in California, I can't see a driver of this car there. I, I see people jumping in and saying, oh, this is cool. Yeah, yeah I want to I wanna do it. Yeah, I had a driver coming down from Chicago – uh, that he said him and his dad just got in his Tesla in Chicago, put in put in Indianapolis and went to, both went to sleep in the front yeah. seats. The next thing they knew, they woke up in Indianapolis. That, that, that that's not entertaining to me. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Not not that I sixty five is, but yeah, I, I I'm I'm kind of with you, Mike. That that human element of pushing the boundaries of yourself and the car, like. Right. It's kind of easy when there's nothing to lose. Like Dalton, you can you can you can testify to this. Those four laps that you did in Indy qualifying, yeah. they were 
you you probably held your breath. Yeah, for it was it was all line. out, and it was <laughs> adrenaline, and like like saying it's the combination that sort of nexus of like man and machine, and getting you know on Fast Friday right, like you're not just getting the car ready, but you're slowly removing the downforce that the, the driver gets, is more and more comfortable at that limit where the car's cars moving around. I mean, a, a robot doesn't care, right? The robot's gonna gonna just do what you tell it to, or or what it, yeah. what its control system is programmed to learn, and then tell it to tell it to, to yeah. do. Um, and then the, the the thing is too, it's like with with you know we we kind of talk about with the sim. It's you know when you're driving i racing, like when we were doing the i racing IndyCar challenge, they the they would have their people kind of develop setups and then give them to us because it was a fixed setup. They didn't want to turn it into this whole like engineering exercise of like the guys that knew i racing were going to beat everyone because they had the secret i racing meta game setups, right? Yeah. But the the ones that came from the people with more experience in sim racing were like super free and it's and it's because i think you can you're only relying on like the visual and auditory cues and you can get away with the setup that's like really loose whereas like a a, a, a real driver is going to do two laps and park it right they're like no fix this because you know even though you can you, you can get close right, right? <laughs> well and there's like there's some guys that are more or less sensitive to it but you're you, it's, yeah. it's still a human right like the, the, the human's never gonna, gonna 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 be a robot so the 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 exercise of engineering the car like i said maybe loses some of its interest or loses some of the excitement because because sure, it's just right. sterile right there, 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 there's no human element that you're trying to i like the, i like the challenge oh, i think it's cool the, like you said it's just it's going to be colleges right that are doing this yeah. I think it'll be yeah, exciting. I, 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 I hope it doesn't turn in, turn into comedy. That that, that would be unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> but there's the um, what's the the program that you did, Don, with the with the cars, the formula uh, formula SAE. S- SAE, which, which I I love that. I I hard. will always be a big proponent of that. And the step yes. period that I work with now, yeah. Canadian Education, is sort of like Formula SAE, but uh, it's RC cars that high school students um, design and build and build and, and work on and, and, and race. And I think those hands-on practical projects are a, where, where you learn a lot technically because it's a, an applied thing, but it's also, you know, not just drivers, but you're managing teammates and people and, and, and all that. And that's, I think that's really hard to learn. And like, you know, at, at school, they'll do these kind of contrived like um, design courses over the course of the course of a term and it's like a design an HVAC system for a house and you're all putting teams of four and it's like no one really cares about it and it's it's, it's kind of an afterthought whereas if it's a the formula SAE thing it's like a passion project and you're managing your own little team so I think that's a great learning opportunity yeah so yeah, I mean for sure I th- yeah I, th- I think that's gonna be good for the more techie computery side of the colleges rather than the hands-on SAE yeah. side so there is like you say Mike there it, it, it is unfortunate well unfortunate for us the the future of the world is I mean automated cars right now right so let's right. educate some kids to to go into that field um, yeah. whether it's going to take over the motor racing and take your job Dalton I don't I don't know so here's here's my prediction I I, I I actually sat down and was like thinking or maybe I was just in in the in the in the shower coming up with like you know when when you, when 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 you do that but you're getting a good insight into Dalton here Mike by the <laughs> so way so my, my like my this is my my prediction this you know, Dalton what is it January 27th 2021 so we can come back to this in 50 years and see if I'm right but short to medium term I I feel like driverless cars are are, are in no way a threat to race car drivers line of work it's just a the technology is not there and you know it, it is there in the sense that like it can get around a track and i'm sure if you gave one of those things to like boston dynamics it could probably go pretty quick but the the technology is not there for the drama of the racing to be where it is with humans because a we make mistakes right and not on, on purpose you could program it to like crash every now and then but like we do stuff because we're angry or we're emotionally, whatever yeah. emotionally yeah. And, you know, that, that's part of the it's an entertainment sport right so that's that's part of what's going on there it's not just cars going fast yeah long term let, let, let's just say like way way in the future where we're at the point where driverless car or like a, autonomous cars are more widely adopted and whether it's you know like an intermodal, like it, it, the car takes over on I-65 and drives you to Chicago, and then you grab the wheel again and get off the, you know, get off the, get off the highway. I still think there's going to be a, a, an interest in 
human at the limit driving a car and that whole I- idea because you know i don't hop on a horse and go anywhere right but people will still flock to the kentucky derby because that's there's like a, 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 a like a, a an art and kind of a yep. know, thing around that and that's probably where racing's going to go in the long term like hundreds of years of you know or once driverless cars are largely adopted that's my prediction <laughs> it's a good one yeah, yeah i don't think you're going to be too far wrong there yeah, Bella. i don't think you're too far wrong. it's yeah. gonna it's and gonna happen for the here and now i think it's an interesting sideshow you know i, I yes. think it's cool and i think it's going to be kind of I, i'm i'm really excited to see what the demo shows yeah. in, in i think it's going to be pretty cool well it may it may get so there's going to be 20 of these cars did you say I, that's what I I I, I and okay I, I I I don't have a press release thing so I I, I could be wrong <laughs> but, but it's I gonna think be several cars on the track from, from what I remember I think there's Woo. 20 universities that are involved or, or interested in, that have said that they, that they will do it. Um, I, so, I, think I think this cool. I, for my prediction for this it's going to be uh, a money making scheme for Delara. <laughs> 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 the yeah. manufacturers of the cars for Cubs and and parts too. <laughs> yeah, parts, right? Yeah. The guy <laughs> drops his laptop and the thing goes spearing into the wall oh, at 120 mile an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, uh, I'll oh, hit some golf balls from the fourth tee on the Brickyard course and see how they can compare with it, how they can cope with a golf ball. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Get it right in the sensor. Cool. Well, um, like I said, we're at about 40 minutes here, so I think uh, if, if anybody wants to ask Mike any questions, type them away in the uh, YouTube comments now before we before we wrap up. But uh, I guess, Mike, kind of in, in sort of closing, what are, you, what are you looking forward to this season? What's your What are you optimistic or what do you – excited about i'm looking forward to improvement um on the team and uh at the racetrack and hopefully to to get a couple podiums would be ideal and uh that's that's what we're all pushing for is uh to drag uh uh aj foyer racing up a bit and see if we can get a couple wins and maybe a podium here or there that's what i'm forward to Sounds yeah, like a sounds like, like a good goal. Let, let, let's let's make one of those wins the five hundred with the four car fellow. That, that would be <laughs> that would be my dream. That'd be pretty cool, wouldn't it? Well, good deal. All We've got a couple of, of days testing there, I believe, coming up shortly in April. So, uh, you know, now that Dalton's in a full time ride, I'm so excited. Yeah, the, the weekends are going to be a little curtailed to the normal three day weekends, I believe. So. Anything's going to be better than than last year when he's you know you got an hour right, Dol, mm-hmm. <laughs> straight into qualifying. That was baptism by fire. So here. no, I'm looking forward to working with you, fella. I enjoyed down at Sebring with Dalton and uh, overseeing the pair of you, <laughs> and hopefully we can be a good team this year. Yeah, look forward to it, guys. Okay, well, thanks everybody for watching. For thanks for the comments, Elaine. Appreciate it, and uh, we'll be back uh, in a couple weeks with another guest and. Uh, for now, uh, have, have fun watching Daytona this weekend. It's going to be pretty exciting. There's a new class of the LMP3 cars, and we got Seb running um, with Mustang Sampling, Mustang I believe. Mustang Sampling, JDC car. Look out for our teammate. Yep. Yep. Cheer him on. So thanks, everybody. Thanks, Mike, and uh, let's go have a good year. <laughs>